All right, let us look at this example. We're going to try and compute the coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the surface. And we also want to know what is the velocity of the box once it returns from uh, being um, pushed by the spring. So initially we have a box with an initial velocity B0 that is 2.5 meters per second. So notice that the distances are given in millimeters. Therefore, we have to turn that into a meter or meters, which is 600 millimeters is 0.6 meters, right? You divide by a thousand. And the velocity is in meters per second, we're good. And has to be in meters per second. Well, it's easier to be in meters per second because remember that our work is going to be in units of newtons per meter. So that will already help us having the units in meters. And this is for the uh, SI uh, system of international units. So the problem says a uh, spring, which is right here, is used to stop a 60 kilogram box or package, which is sliding in a horizontal surface. So it's sliding on a horizontal surface, which is this plane right here and has a friction. Okay. Um, I know that because I already read the whole thing. But so far we don't know about the friction part. So actually let's go ahead and take, take a look again. So a spring, which is right here, is used to stop a 60 kilogram package which is sliding on the horizontal surface. The spring has a constant of k. So this has constant k equals 20,000 newtons over meter okay so per each meter that you compress you're applying 20,000 newtons and it's held by cable so it's, it's initially compressed at 120, 120 millimeters so it's initially compressed at 120 millimeters so let's go ahead and say 120 millimeters to meters is 0 0.12 meters. The package has a velocity of, yeah, we know that, 2.5 meters per second, and the position show, shown, which is right here. The deflection of the spring, once it hits the package, when it hits the spring, it's uh, compressing for 50 sorry for 40 millimeters which that is 0 0.04 meters and determine the coefficient of kinetic friction so that's what I'm saying that we need to find out mu sub k and the velocity of the package once is returning through this initial point all right so let's go ahead and get the body diagram of this guy so we have a package since it's giving us a weight we have the force of gravity on the package and we have a normal force and we have a friction force all right also we have this force because of the velocity we can call it t or whichever letter you want and let's go ahead and use a different um, um, let's go ahead and use this uh, diagram right here from the book so w is mass times gravity friction is mu sub k times the normal, the normal is basically the gravity, and P is the opposite as my force T. So once you hit the spring, there's going to be a force P right here. Since P is making the box or the package slow down, P is greater than T. Then you're losing energy. Therefore, you're going to have a negative sign because of 
energy out. You're not gaining energy, you're losing energy until you're pushed back and then you're gaining energy. So A, what is mu sub K? All right, so mu sub K, we can find it very easy. Remember that we have three things to do. One is P times R is uh, work or times X. Also, we can do one half of mass times velocities squared. And also we can do MGH. So for potential energy, for kinetic energy, and for work. We don't have any height, so this is not going to be applied. We do have initial velocity. So T1 is equal to one half of the mass times the velocity one squared. So this is one half of 60 kilograms. If it's in grams, you divide by thousand, but it's already in kilograms times 2.5 squared. Kilograms, meters per second, this is joules. And it's telling us that this is 187.5 joules. All right, since stopping at point two, state two, remember that we're moving through state one through state two. State two, the velocity final, or velocity two, equals zero. So the kinetic energy at two is zero. That is useful to know. All right, we already have the first part. We have the kinetic energy at point one because of the initial velocity and the kinetic energy at point two, which is zero. And this is actually something that you would find in a factory or something that you have to um, move a package from one oops, row to another row or from one conveyor belt to the next one. This is something that you would encounter. You usually have an optical system to measure this displacement and then in time you know the velocity. And then you have this compressed at a certain energy so you can only use so much energy from the spring. All right. So this is actually used in industry a lot. All right, the second thing is, if you remember, we have an equation that says that the capital U energy, I like to say delta U, but the book says energy from one to two is equal to the state two minus the state one. Okay, so U is the energy from the uh, internal things going in the um, in the system, right? So in this case, the energy from the weight or, or the normal force is part of U. So if you remember, if you remember, we said that U has the other part of the energy right here is coming from the weight and the friction making it stop. So even if there's no force on the, on the spring, just because of friction, this eventually will stop. Okay. And actually, in that case, you can find out when that will stop if you just say U equals to T1 and then divide, you know, find the coefficient of friction, etc. But in this problem, they're giving us um, a spring that isn't going to make it stop. So let's go ahead and do that part. Let's go ahead and say that mu sub k times the normal force is equal to mu sub k times 60 times 9.81 meters per second squared. And this is negative because it's making it lose energy again. It's making it stop. All right, this is negative mu sub k times 60 times 9.81 is 377 um, joules. Okay, remember that the coefficient of friction doesn't have any units, it's just a percentage of how much force is being, or how much energy in this case is being dissipated. Um, and this is actually newtons per meter. Uh, well, one second here. This is in newtons, so this is in newtons. This is um, the normal force times, this is force of friction. 
So force of friction equals, so follow the units that will help you a lot. All right, so force of friction is mu sub k times uh, 60 kilograms or times 9.88 meters per second. So this, you know, is newtons, right? F equals m times a. Acceleration is the gravity, m is the mass, that is newtons. Now, this is just a percentage of how much is subtracting to the force. So if it's 50%, it will be half the force that is uh, be, you know, being applied. But now, to do the energy part, is going to be the force times the distance. And that's when we go back to the problem. They're giving us 600 millimeters and 100 and 40 and 60 and a bunch of them. So we have to decipher that part. So the first thing that we need to realize is that there are many ways of solving this problem. And the book, that's why I wanted to follow the book, because the book decided to do the simplest thing, which is the average between the two states of the spring. Okay, so when the spring is not touching the box, it is already compressed at 120 millimeters. And once is touching the once is compressed because of the box, is 120 plus 40, so it's 160 uh, millimeters. So at this point, if you want, it's 120. At this point, it's 160. Instead of being 0 and 40, they tell you it's well, 0.20 and 0.16. Okay, so basically that's what they're doing here. They're saying. Okay, so the this part right here is the newtons times distance, newtons times meter, and this is just basically the coefficient of friction that we're gonna carry out until we can solve the equation. So newtons and meters, and we already have the newtons right here. We need the meters right here, and we're saying that is. 600 times plus what is it 120 or 40 is plus 40 right because the position of the maximum deflection of the spring is 40 millimeters so they don't get confused from the perspective of the box you're traveling 600 millimeters then you hit the spring and then you're compressing 400 millimeters so it's 600 plus 40 so this is 640 millimeters which is 0 0.64 meters. But from, from the perspective that the spring, this is from an energy perspective, is being initially compressed 120 millimeters, and then it goes further to 100 and, um, you know, 40 millimeters more. But we care initially about the box, then we'll have to do the energy part of the spring. So 60 plus 40 is 640, right? I mean, 600 plus 40 is 640. Okay, that's why here, we're going to do this box is mu sub k, which have, we have to find the coefficient of friction, mass times gravity, this is newtons, times the distance. So this is 600 plus 40 millimeters, which is 0 0.64 meters. And then this force is the force of friction, which is the weight times um, mu sub k, the normal times mu sub k. Okay, so mu sub k times the normal times the distance is equal to negative 377, because we're losing energy, times 0 0.64 meters, and this is in newtons, which is what we have right here. And um, we're going to have to use the calculator because I don't even know what is mu sub k anymore. So let's go ahead and use the calculator here. Calculator. So we have 660 times 9.81. Oh, this is 388.6. 388.6 times 0.64. All right, so it's 376.7. So 
588.6. I apologize. There's a mistake here. There's a mistake right here. 588.6. So this number is. Five eighty-eight point six, and now this is also five eighty-eight point six. Five eighty-eight point six. It's another very nice number. Five eighty-eight point six newtons times. 0.64 meters and this is negative 377 joules all right now we get it okay and obviously this is still multiplying and it's okay and it's okay we still have to multiply and it's okay here and here all right good so we are finished with the package part of the energy conservation now we have to do the spring, which is bringing some energy to the system. Okay, so as I said, they are using the simplest way to you know, compute the energy of the spring. They're saying at 120 millimeters and then 160 millimeters divided by two, the average of the, both, the energies of both places. And that equation is basically from the energy from the spring is the constant times the distance. So if you notice, the constant has units of newtons per meter times the distance in meters. So that is going to be a force in newtons. And that's why we need to know that is 40 millimeters because that will give you energy uh, units of energy. So if you notice, the first thing we're going to do is, so uh, we call it P. So P0 is 20,000 newtons per meter times um, the initial distance, which is 0 0.12 meters. And this is using their computations, 2400. So 2400 newtons. Then for the next one is the same thing, but at um, adding the 40 millimeters. So 20,000 newtons per meter times 0 0.16, which is 3,200 newtons. Okay, so what we need to do is basically do at this point, this is just the newtons that the spring is giving out. Right. Remember that that's the whole thing about the, the spring. The spring is going to give constant force with respect to distance. So um, it's a slope. But this is, say, force. And this is distance. And this slope is k. So at first, you have no force, but whenever you go further in, the spring will give you more force that's the concept of the spring so f equals k times d okay or d could be x k times x in this case so we're basically doing the same thing so we're doing an average of forces so 2400 plus 3200 one half of that times the distance, 0 0.04 meters, because it's 40 millimeters. That gives you 112 joules, and it's negative, again, because it's being compressed, and that is the energy that is taking, um, is being um, compressed, basically is, is, is uh, taking energy from the system. All right, so this is the major thing I see always, always confusion, that one is positive and negative. In this case is negative, again, because we're compressing the, the energy at point one 
is going at 2.5 meters per second, which has more energy than the state two. And this is energy that is taken out of the system. So now we just put everything together and use energy from state one to state two of the package and the energy of state one and state two of the uh, spring. So basically what we have is that, let's go ahead over here and do, okay. So we have that negative 377 joules from the box um, having the moving for 600 millimeters at a certain friction times mu sub k minus 112 joules all right um, and then where is our initial energy from the kinetic energy 187.5 we cannot forget that plus 187.5 joules is equal to zero. So that is our conservation of energy. Again, the conservation of energy comes from the energy of the box moving, which has an energy of 187.5 newtons right here. And that is from the mass and the velocity squared, of the initial velocity. Since we don't have, since the T2 equals zero, then we don't put it in the equation. But if we had it still out, um, leftover velocity, then we'll have to go in the equation too. Okay, so 187.5 is the initial energy, which is positive. Then we subtract the energy because of the friction. And the, ener the, the energy is force times distance. So it's gonna be 377 joules and the coefficient of friction and the energy that a spring is subtracting because of the compression of the spring negative, negative 112 joules if you solve that you basically have to solve for uk for the coefficient of friction the coefficient of friction gives us 0 0.2 uh, no units because it's a percentage 0 0.2 um, is the answer or basically this is sticking out 20% of the force or the energy because of the um, friction with the ground. For part B, they're asking us, what is the velocity? Let's go ahead and look at the question again. Part B, what is the velocity uh, for the package when it passes through this position? So basically when it passes through this point again, at 600 millimeters from the spring, being compre initially compressed at 120 millimeters so so basically there's three states let's go ahead and make sure that we understand that so state number one is remember energy is computed from states state number one is when there's initial velocity of 2.5 meters per second state two is when the spring is compressed and velocity two equals zero, and it's compressed um, 40 millimeters or 0 0.04 meters. And state three is when it goes back and it passes through state one at 640 uh, millimeters. But now the velocity has the impulse of the spring being compressed. Okay, so from point two to point three, at state three. So basically state three is when it passes through state one again, being pushed by the spring. And it's very simple because we know that a state two is completely at rest. So velocity two equals zero. Therefore one and a half of mass times velocity two equals zero. That's easy. But at, at um, state three, we have a velocity that we need to find. So one half, we know the mass, you know, but we don't know the velocity. We have to find that velocity. So again, we can go back and use the energy uh, equation. We know that the friction is already given, and we know that the spring has an energy of being compressed and stretched because it's linear, right? Again, x, f, k, 
f equals kx. So either way, you're going to have the same force. The difference is going to be negative or positive if it's compressed or stretched. So in this case, it's going to be positive 120 joules. So if you set up the equations, we're going to have that is going to be negative 377 times mu k, right, times the coefficient of friction, which is 0.2. Why negative? Because, again, it's going to try to move, and this energy of um, the, the friction is going to try to stop. So basically, this will always be negative if you're starting from a conservation of energy where your initial velocity is given positive energy. So the friction will always subtract energy. Okay. Now, the spring is giving us 112 joules. This is in joules, by the way joules and the spring is giving us 112 joules because it's stretching for 40 millimeters and we have to compute um, this part it's 100 and what is it 30 times v um, squared okay so let's do this computation 377 times uh, 20 Check our calculator. So we have 112. Well, let's first of all say 377 times 0.2 equals 75.4. So we have 112 minus 75.4 equals 36.6 positive. All right. So this is equal to 36.6 joules and it's positive because 112 is greater than this uh, energy because this is remember 0 0.2 so it's only 20 percent of 377 joules that we're subtracting here and again this is in joules all right now we simply just have to um, do the equation again build the equation so the energy from the friction and the spring combined has to be equal to the amount of energy from the initial push. So solving for that, we have 2 times 36.6 and all that divided by 60. And square root and that gives us 1.103 meters per second okay so basically when the box passes through this point on state 3 it has a velocity of 1 meter per second and that's how you solve these type of problems